Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Organic Chemistry module. This is video number 32 and number 3 in our series of a look at addition polymers. This time we're going to look at polystyrene. As always, the key here is to focus on the structure, the properties and uses. So what we want to do is see what it is about polystyrene that's different from uh, the high and low density polyethylene and the PVC that we previously looked at. So what are the differences that we can see with polystyrene and what difference does that make to its properties and or its uses? So when we're looking at the polymerization of styrene, we're looking at this big structure here. This is a benzene ring. Part of a group of organic compounds known as aromatics because of their strong smell. Um, and also potentially quite a dangerous uh, chemical, so we don't tend to play around too much with benzene compounds these days. However, having said that, you, I'm sure, will have encountered a large number of um, examples of the use of polystyrene. So you can see that the first thing that's going to happen that we've, um, I guess, is a difference between the styrene monomer and the two previous monomers that we've looked at is in the position where the benzene ring is, we've either had a single hydrogen atom or a single chlorine atom. This is massive. So this is a much bigger um, substitution group. And so it's completely changed the whole nature of um, this particular monomer. And as a result, uh, it's also going to change quite significantly some of the properties of the resulting polymer. So you can see in this polymerization um, simple, simplified diagram that I have here um, that we've changed the way that we represent the benzene ring. You can see this little circle. There's actually quite a lot of complex chemistry associated with benzene, uh, particularly around a, a concept known as resonance. And that's something that we'll look at uh, in a little bit more detail when we look at some of the um, spectroscopy in the final module. Um, for now though, uh, I guess it's sufficient for us for you to understand that, that basically what can happen is a um, reorganization of these double bonds where the uh, electrons kind of flipping around a little bit, which slightly changes the nature of this uh, particular molecule and certainly means that there are some, some interesting things happening as we polymerize um, a monomer that contains uh, benzene. So what you can see in the polymer itself is that we have these alternating carbons. Every second carbon once again has that um, additional side chain. This time it's a massive, uh, sorry, um, group. And this time it's a massive group. So rather than just being a hydrogen or a chlorine, now it's this big benzene ring. So it kind of dominates when you try and look at this. And so that's something we need to keep in mind when we talk about the structure. In linking the structure to the properties, what you can see is these big benzene rings actually create uh, something that's a little more brittle. And the interesting thing with polystyrene is that we have a kind of the, the brittle, purer version of polystyrene, which um, is used to make things like CDs or DVD cases. Uh, so if you think about that as an example of the application of polystyrene, then there is a level of transparency associated with that. They're quite lightweight, but relatively rigid. But of course, you can snap them and they will not bend. They'll just snap. The key thing with polystyrene, though, is those benzene rings also allow for us to um, aerate, usually with carbon dioxide, um, the um, these polymers. And what that does is they produce this um, slightly different effect of polystyrene, which we call, uh, I guess more colloquially, styrofoam. And there's a little ball right there. <clears throat> now this also um, is a really good application of polymers because we use these in things like bean bags. We also take advantage of the fact that they are very good insulators and we use them for uh, uh, thermal cups. So for um, when we're putting hot liquids in there that, that we can hold them in our hands without that heat being transmitted through to your hand. Um, so polystyrene has a number of different uses and a lot of those are based on whether or not we've slightly changed the structure of the polystyrene by um, basically expanding that structure through the addition of a gas. Same sort of, some of these um, 
properties are similar to what we see with polymers that we've looked at before, but there's one or two slight differences here which makes the um, range of uses of polystyrene a little wider than some of the other um, plastics that we've looked at. So as before, our monomer now is styrene, um, sometimes known as ethenol benzene. Benzene is kind of a, a, a dominant part of that. So while we could, I suppose, call it benzol uh, ethene, because you can see that it's an ethene molecule with a benzene ring on it, that benzene has three um, double bonds. So therefore it takes precedence. So we, we name it on the basis of the benzene and then it's an ethyl group, but it's an ethyl group with a double bond. So it's ethenyl. Benzene is really the name of the monomer. Um, then, of course, the structure that you're drawing here uh, may be something that um, you want to expand out. So four, again, we're going further on. Every second one will have one of these little uh, rings on it. And however you want to draw that uh, with other double bonds showing or with the uh, rings on it uh, is, is fine. As long as you are able to explain this, part of what we want to do is make sure that Part of what we want to do is make sure that each of these bonds is shown and you can kind of use your simplified diagrams to help you explain um, the structure of these polymers and therefore relate them um, to the properties and the uses. So keep going with your table, keep filling it in and uh, hopefully before long you'll have a full table with all of these key polymers in it. So thanks for watching.